Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So Blizzard released nine new cards today for the new expansion Raskans Rumble. So I'm going to be taking a look at all those. We've got three new legendaries including the new lower for the mage class. So some pretty exciting cards here so let's get started. First up let's take a look at a neutral legendary minion. This one is called Undasta. It costs nine mana, has seven attack and seven health so the stats are weak for nine mana. Uh, it is a beast. It has Rush, which I'm glad to see Rush. I like it. I think it's quite a balanced mechanic, and I'm glad that they're bringing it back for the new expansion. And this one also has Overkill, which is the new mechanic for the new expansion. And Overkill, summon a beast from your hand. Now, that can be really good because you can put a lot of cool beasts in your hand. I'm thinking in Hunter, you could put King Crush. Um, Charge Devil Saw is a neutral minion. And of course, if you summon Charge Devil Saw, it can go face. It doesn't have to just trade into minions so there are some really cool possibilities there which would grizzlies great because if you summon it from your hand it gets its full stat value because undaster is also a beast you could potentially put this in a druid deck that works with witching hour now that's not always going to be great because if you're playing Undasta, you want to play it with other beasts, which means that you're going to have a pool of beasts that are going to die. So when you play Witching Hour, you're not necessarily going to be able to get Undasta back. But if you put the right beasts in your deck, you're going to be getting potentially Charged Devil Swords or Witch of Grizzlies. So it, it, you can see already that's kind of like a nice kind of strong package to put together. But is it going to be stronger than just playing Hadronox and playing Taunt Druid? Um, with Witching Hour. Maybe. We'll have to see. Um, but what I would say is that Hadronox only has one expansion left. So after the end of um, Rastakan's Rumble, it will rotate out. So in the future, um, we won't have Hadronox around anymore, which I think will be good for the game, to be honest. And maybe something like this will work. So it looks really cool. The fact that it's got Rush in Overkill is a really good combination as well because Overkill only triggers on your turn. So if you play a minion with Overkill and your opponent um, trades into it and it just dies, then you don't trigger the Overkill effect. It only triggers when you're attacking with that minion. So giving Rush to an Overkill minion suddenly makes that mechanic much more powerful. So that, because you can plan when you want to play it. Now... The issue is with this card is that it costs 9 mana and you're only getting 7-7 seven, seven in stats. And to get the overkill effect to trigger, there has to be a minion on the board with 6 or less health. So later on in the game, depending on what deck you're playing against, they're going to be playing bigger minions. So for example, if your opponent played Lich King on turn 8, you can't play this on turn 9 because it won't even kill the Lich King, let alone overkill it. Now of course you can trade in minions that you've already got on the board. But is that always going to happen? That's going to be the key here. But the fact that it has Rush really makes this card possible. I think if they took Rush off of it, it would just be kind of a useless card. But there's loads of cool possibilities. It's the sort of card that I like. Um, it will work really well against decks such as Odd Paladin, if you can make it to turn 9, I suppose. But <laughs> Token decks, that kind of thing. If they've got smaller minions, because of course the overkill effect can trigger more than once. So if you trade into a minion, you summon another beast, like um, Witchwood Grizzly, for example. It protects your Undaster, and then next turn you can play Undaster again. Um, do another overkill, summon another beast. So it does have loads of cool possibilities. Um, so I like this card. I think it's pretty cool, but is it powerful enough? We'll have to we'll have to see. One final thing I should also point out for Undaster is that a lot of the lower cards are actually beasts, so those will be summoned from your hand. So potentially that would be great, but if they have battle cries, it would be bad. But the one example they mentioned in the live stream and one that could be really good is Sheer Valor. So Sheer Valor costs 25 mana. So if you want to play in a deck that doesn't have many spells, you can just play Undaster. If you get the overkill effect, then you summon Sheer Valor as well. But what happens if you don't get the overkill? That's the question. Next up, we've got the Ironhide Direhorn. This is a 7 mana 7 7 beast in the Druid class. It has overkill, summon a 5 5 Ironhide Runt. So this has some pretty huge potential. If you manage to trade this in 7 times and get into 1 attack minions, you'd get a bunch of 5 5s afterwards. That's obviously the dream. But the reality is, I'm not too sure about this card. The 7 mana 7 7 stats initially are pretty weak. 
So if you're playing this onto the board and your opponent just plays a standard 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight minion, when it comes back to your turn, you can't trade this in and get the over... Well, you can't trade it in full stop and you can't get the overkill effect to trigger, so you get nothing out of it. But it does have its uses, um, and I think this kind of demonstrates the difference between um, Undasta and Ironside Ironhide Direhorn, the fact that it doesn't have Rush makes it quite difficult to do that. If you played this on turn 7 and then your opponent you're playing against Warlock, they just use their upgraded Spellstone just to kill your 7-7. Seven, seven. That's a pretty high tempo swing in their favour. But if you're playing against Token Decks, Odd Paladin, that kind of thing, then you might get one or two trades into um, this with Overkill, which then makes the card worthwhile. Having said that though, if you were to do that in that specific instance, it's quite slow. Um, yes, it's a powerful turn, but you can't gain that 5-5 five five until your next... So you play this, you can't gain the 5-5 five five until the next turn, because it has to happen on your turn. And that 5-5 five five then can't attack until the next turn. So yes, it gives you an extra board presence, but I don't know how strong this is going to be. It's Overkill really is honestly quite slow, um, and hands a bit of the initiative to your opponent because your opponent has a whole turn to deny you that overkill effect. So we'll see. Um, I think the rush mechanic is going to be extremely important as we see in Undasta. And this one, can you get it to do more overkills um, and get some 5.5s? Five I don't know. I think probably it will be too slow. Next up is the Gurubashi Chicken. This isn't a good card. <laughs> it costs one mana, has one health and one attack. It's a beast and it's basically an angry chicken, but instead of enrage, it's got overkill, gain plus five attack. So the possibilities are pretty cool with this card. Um, you can put two of them in your deck and you have to buff it to trigger your overkill effect. Now the advantage it has over the angry chicken is that it can overkill more than once, so if you continually buff it, you keep it alive, its attack can get huge. Um, if you potentially played Dinosize on this, for example, then it, it suddenly it has um, 10 attack and 10 health, and overkill gaining more, 5 more attack every time it overkills. So there's some cool possibilities, but to be honest, Angry Chicken never worked. Um, it was more of a meme card. I would see this to be the same, because you could argue that Enrage is actually better than Overkill. Overkill has the possibility to gain loads more attack because you can do it multiple times. But you do have to overkill the minion that you're attacking. So if you put Blessing of King Kings on this, um, if the minion's got five, uh, sorry, four or less health, then yes, you'll trigger Overkill. But if it hasn't, then you're not even going to trigger that. So pretty cool card. I like the art. I like that it's in the game, but I think it's just a meme card. So next up we've got a pretty cool new Paladin card. This one's called A New Challenger. It costs 7 mana, it is an epic spell for Paladin. And it discovers a 6 cost minion and summon it with Taunt and Divine Shield. So this is a really cool idea um, and I like this. So for 7 mana you're only getting a 6 cost minion, but I would say that Taunt and Divine Shield are worth more than 1 mana. So this card in general is pretty cool, pretty good. Paladin loves to have taunt minions, it loves to have divine shield minions. So this is a really well fitted card for that class. The problem is that the six cost cards for Paladin actually aren't that great. You could get a Crystal Lion, which already has divine shield. You could get Sunky Patarim, which would be a good blocker card, especially with Divine Shield, but you wouldn't get the Battle Cry effect from it. And there's also the Glotron Technician, which is just a 3-4, which buffs your hand, which you wouldn't get that effect either. So, and, and Blackguard as well, which could be a nice taunt because it has 9 health. But not many good Paladin cards, but the neutral cards that you can discover from this, and of course, remember it's Discover, so you do get a choice of 3, so you could pick per situation. Um, I like the Discover cards, I think it's good. But the neutral cards, you can get some good ones. The example they did in the stream was the Boulder Fist Ogre. So adding Taunt and Divine Shield to that makes it powerful. I think probably the best one would be the Damage Stegatron. 
that is cost six mana you get 12 health and five attack but that it already has torn but this would then have divine shield that's a huge kind of blocking minion um, that your opponent will find hard to deal with the mechanical whelp is also six mana so that would be cool um, there are lots of possibilities uh, you can get the, some charge minions so six mana you can get the rocketeer you can also get the argent commander so there are some pretty cool options here uh, a nice card the seven mana is quite a high cost spell which means it also works with sheer valor so if you're playing that kind of deck do you want to play this card or not um i'm not sure we'll have to see um it depends on how many other cards you want to fit into your deck but it is a nice powerful seven mana play in my opinion there are some obvious downsides but when you get discover hopefully all three of your discover choices are not going to be bad Next up, we've got a really cool legendary for Shaman. I really like this one. It's called Zentimo. It costs three mana, so pretty cheap. It has one attack and three health, so the stats are pretty bad. But the effect is pretty awesome. Uh, whenever you target a minion with a spell, it also targets adjacent ones. So this has some really cool implications for Shaman. It's not great in terms of some of their AoE, so we, I'm talking about lightning storm and volcano of course those are two aoe's that don't target specific minions so clearing board state clearing big board state states it might not work very well with but if your opponent's only got a few minions on the board three four something like that you could make some efficient trades but also some really cool um, mechanics with your spells so lightning storm for example is the one mana spell that can um, deal three damage to a minion if you play this it will deal three damage to three minions if your opponent's got three on the board so that's one of the downsides they do have to have these minions on the board so that's pretty cool but it is important to note that the overload effect will happen three times just like it does with electro storm surge so potentially that will be bad because you'll be overloading a lot of mana unless you wanted to to do that if you're playing an overload deck for example Speaking of um, Electro Storm Surge, that actually synergizes with this card as well. So if you've got them both on the board, not only will it target the adjacent minions, but it will target the adjacent minions twice. So they, you can see instantly there's some really cool effects here. But probably the most exciting and one that I'm most looking forward to trying is Unstable Evolution. I think that will be awesome. Uh, unfortunately, like it's a shame Giggling Inventor has been reduced Oh, sorry increased cost of mana because if you could play Zentima on the board then your Giggling Inventor and then Unstable Evolution that would be pretty cool but there are lots of ways for Shaman to get minions onto the board to be able to play um, play Unstable Evolution and Zentimo. so cool card I'm looking forward to, to seeing that it's going to be difficult to play around as well because you're always going to have to consider new spells in the future that come in for shaman you're always going to have to consider that they can target more than one target now if you play them with zentimo and if you play with them electra they can target um they the spell can be cast twice in the same turn so really cool possibilities uh, I, I like it difficult to play around fun to play with a good card in my opinion Next up is the Waterboy, which is another neutral minion. It's rare this time. Not very exciting, but it is a pretty good card, I think. Um, two mana it costs. It has two attack and one health, so the stats aren't that great. But the Battle Cry is the next hero power you, you cast this turn costs zero. So what it basically means is you can play your hero power with a 2-1 body. So that is good, I think. That has some really powerful implications. Um, it is an even cost card, which is important to note because, which I'm glad about actually, because you wouldn't want Odd Rogue to be able to play this. But if you're playing an even deck, it's probably worse than if you're not because your hero power only costs one in an even deck. So when you play this card, you're actually only saving one mana. But if you're playing it in a normal deck, it's just good is a good tempo play on turn two if you can play this and your hero power that's a good tempo play so it's pretty good the example they gave on stream was zoo i think zoo would would actually really enjoy this card whether the one health is a little bit um too small or not because it can't be healed so heal zoo is something that really works really well if it's only got one health you can't you haven't got the potential to heal it but being able to play this on turn two and drawing a card with your hero power 
that's pretty strong. So I expect this will see some play. Um, it, it just depends. While Kalisev's in the game, people won't want to play two drops so much. So, But when Kalisev rotates out, which will be after Rastakhan, potentially Waterboy might come in. Now the next three cards are all mage cards, and they all follow the same kind of theme of synergizing with using your hero power, and pretty exciting cards. I think these are all really cool. Um, in the past, cards that affect your hero power haven't really been that effective. Um, Black World Pixie was one that you could use in certain decks, but ultimately, um, apart from Baku and Gen, obviously, cards that kind of affected your hero power weren't used that often. Um, the Inspire mechanic, which was introduced way long, long time ago in the Grand Tournament, just really didn't catch on. But these cards really support it, so there is potential in Mage now. So let, let's take a look at the first one. It is the lower for uh, Mage, so a pretty big card. Legendary Mage card that costs 7 mana. Janalai the Dragonhawk is the card. It, it's 4 mana, 4 attack, and is a beast, like a lot of the lowers. So it's a Spiteful Summoner stat line. And the battle cry, if your hero power dealt 8 damage this game, summon Ragnaros the Fire Lord. So Rag is back, guys. Ragnaros is back. Um, this card's really good. But it is really, really strong in a card that kind of focuses... Uh, sorry, in a deck that focuses on hero powers. So the Water Boy is a card that synergizes with this. And the next two cards that we look at will also synergize with this and kind of make that deck stronger. But... When we consider all of these cards, we have to consider the Frost Lich Jaina. Again, Jaina will be rotating out after the Rastakhan expansion, but while it's here, dealing 8 damage with your hero power is something that you want to do. When you've got Jaina, you always want you want to be hitting it every turn. You want to you want to make a new water elemental. So dealing 8 damage seems quite hard, but when we look at the next two cards, it's not. So let's just pretend that there were no extra cards for um, for supporting your hero power. This could be one that you could put in Control Mage that you just play late on in the game. You've probably used your hero power eight times by that point. It would have to be a control matchup. It's not going to work if you're playing against an aggro deck. But seven mana, four, four, summon a Ragnaros. Awesome. Really good stat line. Um, you get 4 4 in stats there, plus you get Ragnaros, which we all know was really good. Actually, had to be Hall of Fame because it was too good. So, I like this card. I think it's cool. It only costs 7 mana, so um, it gives you the opportunity to bounce it back to your hand with the uh, Brewmaster in the same turn. And the next turn, you can play this again and you summon another Ragnaros. Is that too slow? Maybe. Um, you're kind of looking at 9 mana on the first turn to summon a Ragnaros. Potentially 10 because you'd probably be floating that last 1 mana. Then you have to play another 7 mana. So it's kind of, we're kind of looking at 16 or 17 mana to summon 2 Ragnaroses and a 4-4. Pretty good, I think. Um, plus everyone loves Ragnaros. So I think this card's cool. Really good. And... You'll see when we look at these next two cards, I think um, this is genuinely a very viable card. Uh, so let's take a look at the Spirit, the Spirit for Mage. This is called Spirit of the Dragonhawk. It's rare. It only costs two mana. So again, a very cheap card to play. It's not going to interrupt your turns too much. It has Stealth for one turn, just like all the Spirit cards. 0-3 in stats. So again, the stats are, are awful, but... Your hero power also targets adjacent minions. So that is really good. If you're playing um, a mage deck or, or and you've got Jaina out on the board, potentially you could summon three water elementals if you've got this out there. Of course, they all have to have one health, but you know it opens those possibilities. And using your hero power to target adjacent minions can be really strong. So that's cool. Really good, cheap card to put out on the board. Also important to know, when it targets adjacent minions, if you do get it to hit three minions, that counts as three damage against your battle cry for um, Janal the Dragonhawk. So you only have to deal eight damage. Well, in one turn, you could deal three with this card. So then we take a look at the next card, which is called Daring Fire Eater. This is a one mana, one, one. 
um, again for Mage. And its battle cry is your next hero power this turn deals two more damage. So now you've got um, for a one mana card, you can then do your hero power for two mana. So for three mana, you can do three damage. Pretty good because you can target it. But if you Spirit of the Dragon Hawks on the board, that can then target adjacent minions. So then you're doing nine damage in one turn, which then instantly upgrades your Jalal the Dragon Hawk. So you, you also don't have to have the Dragon Hawk in your hand. It can be in your deck because it's hero powers you cast this game. So really, really strong possibilities there. And Daring Fire Eater only costs one mana. So it's not hard to play it along with your Spirit of the Dragon Hawk to get these cool combos. Now it's important to note that Odd Mage does exist. So if you're thinking about making that deck, you could put Daring Fire Eater in there, which it would make it really strong. You can also put Janali into it, which would make it really strong. But the Spirit is two mana, so it only goes into even or non or normal decks basically so you can't put that in in the odd deck which i think is probably a good idea i think odd mage would be the hero power would just be too powerful if you could play it with spirit of the dragon hawk and a daring fire eater it would be too too powerful so some really cool possibilities here i mean the game that they showed on the live stream was just fun to watch it was cool to see all the new interactions and that's what you want to see from a new expansion um, there are also other cards already in Mage that can synergize with this. There is the Ice Walker that costs 2 mana as 1-3, but it also freezes a target. So that again adds an extra bit of value to your hero power. Now, when watching the live stream, we were expecting if you play Spirit of the Dragon Hawk and the Ice Walker together that you would freeze all three minions. That didn't actually happen in the live stream. I think um, they were quite surprised on the stream as well. Uh, so. I don't know whether that's going to be something that they will change uh, and actually code it in or whether it was working as intended. Maybe it was working as intended, I don't know, but um, I think if it can't, uh, if you can't freeze adjacent minions, you probably wouldn't put the Ice Walker in, but if it does manage to freeze adjacent minions, then wow, that's a, that's a pretty strong combo. So all of this kind of leads towards a potentially viable um, mage deck that uses uh, great utility of the um, hero power. The problem I, I see with it a little bit is that you're using a lot of cards in these combos so if you're putting two Daring Fire Eaters and two Spirit of the Dragon Hawks in that's already four cards out of your deck and they're low cost cards that you all have to play together and once you've played a card you can't play it again so are you going to be generating enough value off of these low-cost cards to, to win the game, basically? I think in the early game, using a Mage Hero Power could be really, really strong, just like wiping out boards just by using your Hero Power. Think about against Odd Paladin, for example. It'd be great if you just play Spirit of the Dragon Hawk and your Hero Power and kill three of their 1-1s. So some cool possibilities. Um, the game that they showed on the live stream, they're playing against Token Druid, which didn't really put up much of a fight. So it'll be interesting to see how competitively this kind of deck worked. But I think when it comes down to it, um, the Dragonhawk, the lower for Mage, I think that is a cool card that um, could potentially work. It's a 7 mana 4 4 Spiteful Summoner with, that always summons a Ragnaros after you've used your hero power done eight damage with your hero power so trade-offs but cool card that i think i'm going to enjoy all right guys that's all the cards i've got to show for today let me know what you think about these cards in the comments i think they're pretty cool i'm really getting excited for the new expansion now they will be revealing new cards every single day now up until the 28th of november when they release the final set of cards so we get the full set so i'll be doing daily videos with reviews so check back to watch those as well but thank you for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one